in 10 days, around April 20th, the Bitcoin happening happens. This is like going to Disneyland for traders, especially those in the cryptocurrency space. Hey everybody, this is the Economic Ninja. I am here with Joe Marshall, or what's your handle on X? Simplistic. Oh, simplistic charts, Joe. Because we like to keep our things simple, okay? <laughs> <laughs> keep it simple. Well, there's nothing simple about the uh, gains yeah. that people are making right now in crypto, and we want to talk right. about that. Exactly. So I am here in Texas right now. That's why I got my shirt, my Texas shirt on. And uh, we are in an undisclosed location uh, with a very creepy wall behind us because we're in a creepy hotel room uh, filming uh, something <laughs> right. right now to help exactly. a lot of people. Now, I've known Joe for a long time. You've been a professional trader for a long time, time, especially in crypto. Right. Yeah. Well, in crypto 2017, previous to that, uh, 2005. Yeah. In the stock market. Yeah. And all the... I've funds. known you personally for a while, and I can yeah. say that you are a professional trader and you live off of your trade. So, well, thanks. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to be a little humble here in Texas. You know? Yeah, well, look, there's a lot going on in the crypto markets. Let's talk about it real quick. Hashtag Bitcoin if Bitcoin's your favorite number one hold. It's okay if you're a Bitcoin maximalist. I'm not because I like making more money and more gains, so I trade my alts into crypto, into Bitcoin. Um, but let me know what uh, down below what your favorite is. I think your favorite is... Well, Theta. That's <laughs> right. Theta is your favorite right now. Yeah. I like it. All right, cool. Right. Um, we've got a handful of stories that we want to talk about. And the happening is coming up. We're a mere 10 days away. I want to let you know that there's a link down in the description below. Tonight, I am in Texas filming a live AMA on crypto trading, how to right. make money, how to protect yourself. Right. Tonight. That's the main thing. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, tonight, if you want to sign up, it's free. It's uh it's limited, and we're probably going to be filling up within the next yeah. couple of hours. So right. it's just because my Zoom account isn't very large. So we're limited to 1,000 people. <laughs> yeah. I've been told that size matters, uh, and we found out that with Zoom, that is indeed true. true. <laughs> it's true, yeah. So size okay. does matter. All right. So first story we're going to talk about right now, and it's all over the news. Spot Bitcoin ETF cumulative trading volume crosses $200 billion. It says right now, cumulative trading volume for U.S. spot Bitcoin. Exchange traded funds has surpassed $200 billion as of today, less than three months after the SEC approved ETFs from BlackRock, Fidelity, Bitwise, and others. Spot Bitcoin ETF cumulative uh, trading volume has nearly doubled in the last month alone. And we've seen the price right. follow that, right, Joe? Can you oh, speak exactly. to that? Well, first of all, I was going to say, you mean this is not a, a fad, a come and go fad? We're, we're actually, the institutions are actually here. I mean, that's unbelievable. I thought Bitcoin died. <laughs> yeah, like a thousand times. A thousand times, times. yeah, right. I know. Bitcoin's a scam, right? Dave Ramsey says it's a right. scam, so yeah. it must be a, a scam. A few other you know, big time people. Yeah, those but, people are super smart. Yeah. Yeah. But in all seriousness, you know, we're kind of in a consolidation zone right now. We have been for about a month, yeah. uh, 33 days, to be precise. And that's the, for a lot of people, the frustrating part, you know, they want it to go straight up, uh, you know, see those gains coming in. Yeah. But sometimes after the big run we've had, to be honest with you, uh, you know, just like running a marathon, you got to slow down, you know, step off the course, <laughs> take a rest and prepare for the next uh run up. Yeah. Uh, now, so. to be honest with you, this YouTube channel actually started from my crypto experience and it blew up and I, I pulled back a little bit, yeah. quite frankly. Mm -hmm. It scared me. Um, but I'm starting to come out and talk to uh, more about my trades. Uh, I'll be showing one of my trades. My swing trade has made me, what, 44% as of today. And I started that trade around the 17th of January. There's a lot of money to be made. There's right. also a lot of money to be lost. And uh, even filming today with you, there's some things I was showing you. You're showing me things about technical analysis. I'm showing you things about exchange security. Right, and how to stay safe and everything. Uh, yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's been a learning, a very good learning experience both ways. Yeah. yeah. We're going to talk sure. to people and teach them how to make money off the Bitcoin trade, not even having to own Bitcoin. Although both right. of us are in full agreement. If you don't hold it, you don't yeah. own it, right? Right. Exactly. So we like that. And we like the level two trading, the, the, the transparency that crypto <laughs> trading brings, that right. stock trading does not. Right. A little bit of difference there and uh, the return yeah. on investment is certainly 
uh, a lot better, a lot higher with the with the crypto. Yeah. So being that the ETFs are exploding, we're seeing uh, Bitcoin being pulled off the market actually pretty rapidly. As a matter of fact, that's the next story. Grayscale has seen a massive outflow. You see, before this ETF came to be, Grayscale was a fund. You would invest money, they would buy uh, Bitcoin, and they would hold it. Now that it's an ETF, it switched from a fund to an ETF. There's the ability to take the Bitcoin that you invested in with them and pull it off. And they're seeing massive outflows, right? Right. And that's uh, part of the reason we're seeing this uh, stagnant you know, market over the yep. last month. Uh, we're just trying to, or the other institutions are trying, we, like we're buying it all up. Yeah. The institutions are trying, you know, another way we haven't been doing a little bit. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the institutions are coming in there, scooping it up. And as you can see, we haven't had any huge uh, downplay, any huge market sell-off, really. Because uh, the average, uh, the last having the average was around, you know, 30% pullback. We haven't gotten close to that yet. Yeah, so let me explain something real fundamental that just happened in the crypto market that the media is actually not telling you about. So again, most funds, most investment vehicles out there, as of any time before mid-January, mid-February, were not allowed to buy Bitcoin, right? Because the SEC mm -hmm. did not you know, allow them to do it. So Grayscale and other funds were able, you were able to invest in Bitcoin because they would buy it, they would secure it, they would be the custodian of it. So a lot of money flowed in, private money, into these funds like Grayscales. When it changed to an ETF, the people that were investing or the, the funds that were investing in this now had the opportunity to pull out the Bitcoin, put it on exchange, and sell it for dollars. Right. So right now, you're seeing sort of a stagnant move but what you're also seeing is people that are pulling out and some are taking profits in dollars right now. And I think this is going to be an intermediate intermediate sort of high. I don't think we're anywhere right. near this next cycle high. Would you oh, agree? Oh, no. Right now, we've uh, the last seven months has been straight up, you know, all green months, all positive months, bullish months. And uh, that's the first time in Bitcoin history. Yeah. So we're due for just a time count, actually, uh, due for, a, you know, a little bit of a, a, what's called a pause candle, a pullback. Uh, you know, again, let the price kind of rest, consolidate for the next uh, push to the upside. Now, I do have a, coincidentally, I do in front of me have uh, an estimated, uh, when we uh, break out, an estimated target. Uh, I don't know if you want to hold that for later or <laughs> go ahead. I don't know. No, yeah. just say it. Oh, okay, say it. okay. I'm curious if it's in line with mine. Because okay. I'm between 130. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this out there. This is my okay. non-professional advice, 130 okay. to 140. Okay, you are very, very close. Okay. You're almost spot on. All right. Okay, well, the first target, we got to go to this first. But anyway, out of this consolidation phase we're in now, once we clear and then get confirmation on a weekly candle over 71,500. So that's what you want to be looking for um, Sunday evening, okay? And uh, speaking of Sunday, going in the money, notoriously, those are your best uh, days, not financial advice. Uh, to scale in a little bit. Normally, they're, you know, um, Bitcoin price, et cetera, is a little bit lower on those days. Yeah. But anyway, once we close over 71,500 on a weekly basis, the next target is 95. But more importantly, you got to hit 80 before you hit 95. And yeah. what I'm, the reason why I'm saying that is the 80, 80, 120 rule, okay? Meaning once an asset uh, clears, 80, 80,000, then there's an 80% probability uh, odds that you'll go to 120. Yeah. And I'll prove that with, well, I'm just- Well, how's this real quick? Let me jump yeah. in there. While I'm talking, why don't you pull up when you called the bottom of Bitcoin? You have a okay. timestamp. Do you have that somewhere? Right, well, uh, Do you, for- Pull it on your phone, pull it on your phone. Do you oh, have like okay. a, just a screenshot that I can share with them? Because it's actually really important because I've known Joe for a long time and I watched him call the bottom and I even remember calling him and going, really, It's this is it? Like we can't get any more of a shakeout? And he did a, a, a tweet on X. Let me see here. All right, cool. Idea. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys. This is really high. Now we gave our members, uh, before I posted it, they knew about it a month ahead. I just wanted to. This is January 22nd of 23 20. when the tweet came out. Yeah, 20, 23. So here 20. Go. Yeah, 23. So January 2023. And As you go been, to uh, X, yeah, that's Twitter, Twitter handle. Yeah, you can see it right here. 
Um, as we've been saying, the low for Bitcoin was put in November of 2022 at 15,460. The only thing that can take that price out is another FTX <laughs> brought to you by Digital Currency Group. Okay, so Tether or the Fed. Okay, so he called it back then. And the reason why it's really important to, to have these timestamps is because there's a lot of movement into the Bitcoin space. And we're going to see with the current situation with the halvening starting. With, um, with the influx of the ETS, the shock. Oh, Jizo, when did you put that out? Oh, that was in October. All right, here we go. I'll show you another one. So this is where he says, heads up over the next, this heads, okay. Over this next BTC halving, Bitcoin will experience something that has never happened. It will experience both a supply shock and a demand shock. You can see now that we have very high odds of adding a zero to the current price of Bitcoin. And you can see right here where he circled it. This happened on the 12th of October of 2023. So there is, actual ways to be able to identify these cycles. This is a big cycle. This is a way to make money. We've been talking about over the last four years on this channel, the importance of making money, but saving money for a crash. That crash is coming. It's coming in all uh, forms of different ways. Um, the story today uh, that Grayscale is putting out, Grayscale CEO says Bitcoin ETF outflows are reaching an equilibrium. Why is this important? because there's a panic going on that Grayscale very soon could actually run out of Bitcoin. Now, if they run out of Bitcoin, what's going to happen? They've got to go buy more. Right, that's where your supply and demand <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, hey, you know. Just, yeah. yeah, and it says right here that Michael uh, Sonshin, I, I can't pronounce his name, CEO of Digital Asset Investment Manager Grayscale, sees outflows from the company Bitcoin Exchange Traded Fund reaching an equilibrium. He said that some of the selling connected with settlements of bankrupt crypto companies like FTX is largely behind us, according to the report, citing an appearance on a Reuters podcast. Now, it goes in to explain what's going on with Grayscale and, um, and uh not Bitfinex, but uh, FTX. Mm -hmm. But the point being is that this has opened up a market, the, the stock market, to where average investors can invest in crypto. Right, like we were talking about earlier, uh, your grandmother's not gonna buy Bitcoin or the ETF. Uh, she's gonna be sold the ETF, for example, yeah. you know, through her exchange. They haven't even started ramping up the advertising, the commercials and things of that nature, the different institutions and exchanges uh, to push this out. So you have a built-in, this is somewhat like a company, if you think about it, yeah. at this point in time. And they're gonna push it out, do the advertising for you, and you just have to know, you know, how to scale in, how to scale out, how to, you know, work, uh, work your business uh, within that market. Totally. And speaking of business, tonight on the AMA, I put a link down below if you want to register for it. It's tonight. Um, it's going to be a live AMA talking about the crypto market. We're limited to only a thousand spaces. I'm sorry. And I think we're at seven yeah. something right now. Uh, but talking about business, we've got an author as part of uh, this AMA of the Bitcoin Business Accelerator. He's going to come on too and answer some questions because there are a lot of people that are starting businesses wrapped completely around crypto. Yeah. And that's really important. Yeah. Hey, real quick, um, we're in sort of a, a, it's not the best hotel room, I'm not going to lie. I thought, I thought it was, yeah. So so we took down this painting that was here, and there's like all this weird stuff. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say right now that if you if you find yourself in an embassy suite, so, <laughs> and you, there you go. There's going to be a very high-end I Love Bitcoin sticker behind a painting. So just so you know, we did that live. So. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. And whoever finds it... Yeah, gets a sticker that says yeah, I Love Bitcoin. Gonna, yeah, <laughs> you get <to> nothing. <laughs> right. So yeah. anyway, so uh, what else can we talk about as far as the cycles? And Because you've already taught... You're, you're top, and this is really right. important to know when we're topping, because right. a lot of right. people... You told a story the other day about a sheriff. Do you want to share that story? Oh, well, yeah, that... Yeah, it happens to be my brother. Yeah. Uh, speaking of time and markets, and uh, during the last having, in all seriousness, he took yeah. 25 grand. I'll just go ahead and give you the numbers. And that was in November, yeah. uh, around Thanksgiving, actually. And then, and, uh, and you can, you know, check this out, look at the charts. But uh, that was in November. And then in April, he took that 25 grand and flipped it into two hundred and fifty-four thousand dollars, 
And uh, yeah, that was, you know, quite the talk, you know, around the family gatherings. And then, you know, a lot of people started taking this, you know, a little bit more seriously. But the problem frankly. was, is by the time they took it serious, when they heard about him yeah, making they those games. The, yeah, uh, he kind of sort of knew when to start, you know, uh, quote, quote, unquote, scaling out. So he was able to take a lot of that, well, all of it off the table. Uh, not at, at the exact top, you know, yeah. but he was able to, you know, come out uh, very well. I bought a and it was life changing, quite frankly. Oh yeah, because you take that and then you reinvest. You don't, you know, people. If you ever come into a little bit of money, it goes out as quick as it comes in. You know, well, if you I, don't know how to manage it, that's another topic. But yeah, and I've yeah. been a part of ICOs that went from thirty cents to eighty dollars. Wow! And I sold, yeah. I yeah. sold some, which was wow. awesome, and mm -hmm. I was very excited. The rest of it, I still have, and it's worth nothing. So it's gotcha. important to know when to get in, when to get out. Um, it's important to understand that a lot of these projects are gonna be gone. They're gonna be like dust exactly. in the wind. Right, if anyone had, had heard, you know, I, a lot of people might be old enough to remember the dot-com boom and bust, yeah. uh, where you had multi, literally multi-generational wealth made and, and then lost uh, not too long after that. And yeah, it's a very emotional thing. I think it was more psychological than you know, well, it, let's talk about that know. mania. I was a part of it. I was a stock investor. I, I bought JDS Uniphase. JDS Uniphase, I didn't buy it at $2, but it started around $2. It mm -hmm. went eventually to $800 a share, maybe mm -hmm. maybe six. I'd have to check it. Yeah. But it, it was wiped out during the button. Mm -hmm dot com bust right. and we've seen right. that with yeah. nfts we've seen it with icos yeah. um exactly. now we've got the meme coin frenzy and we've got the uh, ai, AI. Right. yeah and we, you know we just uh filmed a lesson on how to use that frenzy how to identify where the next frenzy is because it's right. actually easy to figure out and then how to go make money from it but not stay in those coins right exactly and if you ever you know i'm from texas so i got to talk about this a little bit of fishing yeah. if you've been on the lake and see all the bass, you know, having a feeding frenzy, so to speak, yeah. the sand bass. And then, you know, you get up on them before you know it, they're moving to another, uh, you know, feeding area. Yep. And we kind of compare that to the to the wells, institutions, or even, you know, uh, large groups of people that uh, pull and run the markets. Uh, totally being able agree. to uh, see that on the charts and be there uh, you know, before it happens. Yeah. yeah. And so that's the thing. We need to be in a community that understands the fundamentals of, of trading because it's straight up gambling if you do it a certain way, you know, yeah. in all at all levels, right? Yeah. This is you're putting money in. You have the this high you, risk, high risk, risk and high reward. Yeah. But the thing right. is, is you could mitigate that risk by having a plan. And most people don't exactly. have that. So that's what we're putting together right now. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, here we can't even drive a new car or truck off the lot, you know, without insurance on it, you know, and of course your mortgage company always wants you to have homeowner's insurance to protect, you know, your assets. Um, and no reason why you shouldn't do that, you know, with your investments. And that's why we have, uh, you know, specialized in, in, in teaching people a certain way to uh, do your stop losses. Uh, but that's another subject for another time. Totally. But, but to, you know, for, to protect yourself. Well, and right now yeah. there's stories coming out like how this happening of Bitcoin is going to affect the miners. Well, I'm going to tell you how it's already affected the miners. These mm -hmm. ETFs, big funds on Wall Street are going directly to large mining companies and they are trying to buy the Bitcoin directly from them. Here's the problem. Bitcoin miners understand the fundamental of Bitcoin better than anybody because they're uploading right. the network. They mm -hmm. want the Bitcoin. You know, it, and whereas a lot of people don't understand this, large exchanges like Coinbase, they charge you fees. A lot of those fees, they're in Bitcoin. They have accumulation. The funds go to Coinbase. They go to Gemini. They go and figure out, hey, we want to sell that stuff. So what happens is off book, you don't see that transaction. You see the crypto go from one hand, let's say an exchange like Coinbase, into a fund. All right. What does this do? It doesn't affect market dynamics as much. So we don't see big swings in prices. Right. Right. And that's another, you know, technique or tactic. Every one of these institutions, exchanges uh, are trying to get as much as they can. They want to be first to market, especially, you know, the Fidelities, JP Moore, et cetera, uh, that are already in it with ETS. Uh, they want to get as much be the you know, uh, the king of, you know, uh, Wall Street and be able to have the supply to there uh, to support their, you know, client base. And I already think we've hit, well, I know we have it, the uh, big 
money, uh, client base, the yeah. you know multi multi billionaire billionaire families uh, coming in, or we'd already be probably a lot higher. You know? Yeah, I completely <laughs> agree. And that's the thing. Right now, uh, I think my ultimate trade is going to be Bitcoin to silver. Honestly, okay. and um, right. you teach people yeah. how to trade micro futures. Right. We've seen how oh my goodness how to control. Right. Physical silver, yeah, big a contracts. thousand out. Uh, uh, check this out: a thousand ounces uh, micro future uh, yeah. silver, a uh, thousand ounces for just a tad over two grand. Yeah, and I don't know if you'll be able to, you know, beat that deal. <laughs> no, <laughs> so I don't know. But, but what we do, we uh, what you can do is, yeah, do that, and then you can swap it. You know, as it runs up or runs down, swap it for physical. Exactly. Or you know, well, what that's what I did in 2017, oh, and I was okay. very. There yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing. We're, we're playing these cycles. And right now, what you're going to see, and this is what this entire channel has been about, mm -hmm. is the crypto cycle is in play right now. Exactly. It will be affected when the stock market takes a big downturn because, and this is another warning, and we'll talk about this more in the AMA. Make sure we hit this point. Um, okay. The sheer amount of money it's going to Bitcoin in the stock market is also adding to the derivatives. The derivatives position will be the downturn to Bitcoin in the crypto market when the cycle, the real estate or the uh, stock market cycle turns down. Right. Yeah, there is still a correlation. We haven't decoupled from that. Nope. Uh, you know, at least recently, maybe well down the road. Well, that's, you know, all this is new to everyone. Yeah. Uh, right. Even the institutions. And it's hard to, you know, war game it. Uh, you can a little bit. Yeah. Uh, looking out. Uh, again, you know, using the cycles. And one of the cycles is that after a bear market, which we had in 2022, uh, looking back in history, as far as, you know, they can go back, um, the next two years, 80% uh, of the time were up markets, yeah. uh, which was 23 and now 24. Yeah. So 2025, we might start walking on eggshells, so to speak, you know, totally agree. to see, uh, you know, if that way is going to, you know, pushes deep into, you know, maybe the second quarter, third quarter of uh, 2025, or, you know, we go into the fourth quarter. But yeah. yeah, the music, there's less and less chairs in the room and the music has been playing quite a while. So totally yeah. agree. Well, hey, listen, I've known Joe for a long time. We've got a lot to do today. So we got to go and get ready for the AMA. Oh, if you guys right. want to register for the AMA, the link is down below. I'll also pin it in the comments the second this is not live. But uh, we got some gold and silver videos to talk about too later. Oh, okay. So let's do that cool. after this. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Well, everybody, it's going to be on live. I can't wait to see you guys. It's going to be, I don't remember what time, but it's tonight when the sun goes down. That's all I remember. Right. Yeah. It's after dinner. That's right. So and remember, if you're in a, in a hotel in Texas, look for the very valuable Bitcoin sticker. All right. With that being said, everyone, the Economic Ninja and Joe right. are out. Man, that was less stressful than I thought it was. <laughs>